these days, false new moons, annihilating the people's understanding, even to be able to comprehend what day is the feast days, to be able to do the things themselves. They're hypocritically mocking us in feasts, hypocritical mockers in feasts. We're calling them friends, brothers. But they're rewarding us evil for good to the spoiling of our soul. They're even feasting with us. They gnash upon me with their teeth. It says, Most High, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction, my, dar my darling from the lions. His, his offspring, his children from the lions. Another root word, another priest of the lions. Dan also is a lion's well. It says, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. So they hate us for nothing. They hate us because we're of the 12 tribes of Israel and they're the 13th tribe. Serpent, by the way, and the Adam and the Path. They, they hate us for being of the righteous chosen people. All nations are going to hate us for the truth, but they hate us without a cause. Verse number 20, for they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, or I hath seen it. This thou hast seen, O Adonai, O Lord, in the English, keep not silence, O Most High, be not far from me. So, and he also speaks about judgment, and he's going to judge according to our righteousness. For time's sake, I'm going to go here to the next song. But that's definitely, none of this stuff could be, you could you comprehend, hypocritical mocker and feast, uh, uh, formulating together, but we know it not slandering our people, but we don't even know it. The lions, these things are root words. These are precepts that are parabolic. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. These things you couldn't comprehend um, without a cause, without understanding the, the Dan tribe. I'm going to go into Psalms 57 and 4. It says, My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongues a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O Adonai, O Most High. Be thou exalted above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Salah. So that pit that they that snare in that pit um, is definitely right here. Lions, again, once again, the lions are spirits. Tongues and their teeth are, are sharp swords, spears and arrows. Dig the pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. That's pre that's, as I said, precept upon precept for a trap, but this trap has become their own trap. They can't ever come into our righteousness. They've been blinded, setting up traps for the people to keep us from our righteousness, which has become their own trap. That's exactly what's being said, that they have digged the pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Psalm 69 and 4. Next psalm says, They that hate, this is also a psalm of David, as is the last. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. Many of them. Because as I said before, these Negro Indians have never suffered. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, in which one of them speaks of our people being numbered as the, the stars of heaven, but being reduced in number. Because of the iniquity of our forefathers, which has happened during the slave trade, we lost many in the slave routes, uh, Spanish Inquisition, as well as the the slaughter of the Native Americans. Not the Native Americans, not them, because they have joined themselves with that beast. But they're more than the hair, hairs on my head, without a cause. It says they that would destroy me, being mine enemies, wrongfully, are mighty. So there's two things that tell you without a cause and our enemies wrongfully. They're wrongfully our enemies. They're many and mighty. As I stated, these are the Spartans of old. They're brethren the Spartans. Look at Shaquille O'Neal. These are mighty people. This ain't no weak people. We're talking about some strong people. LeBron James, Ray Lewis, um... Many of your prominent football sports athletes are, are, are from these Spartan people. We live in among the Spartans, and people don't even know it. We People don't even know that we're living among the Dan tribe who are brethren to the Spartans, the Lacedaemonians, and most people don't even know it. Still in their mind, they've been deceived to believe that the Spartans were white people, 
but really these are the Danites who are the Negro Indians that are among us, the Choctaw and Chickasaws. He says, there being my enemies wrongfully are mighty, then I restore that which I took not away. He restored the truth, the doctrine. Here in verse number five, O power, thou knowest my foolishness and my sins are not hid from thee. Okay, so um, I'm going to go down here to verse number 14, Psalm 69 and 14. It says, deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. It says, Hear me, O Most High, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul, and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach, and my shame, and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness, and I look for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. This is also a prophecy that happened to the Son of the Most High when he was on the, was being crucified, and they gave him uh, uh, vinegar and gall to drink. But this also is a reference to the fact that they're rewarding us evil for good to the spoiling of our soul. So this is definitely a very parabolic scripture. Verse number 22 says, Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. So that's the same table as I had mentioned before, when it says that all tables, for all tables, are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. All these teachings that they've created for our people to stumble in and stumble in judgment and err in has become their own trap. They haven't been able to enter our righteousness because of the traps that they set. It says, let their table become a snare before them and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually to shake. So that also goes in Isaiah 29 where it says he hath closed their eyes, poured out the spirit. He says he poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. Also mentioned again, that's the, the blinded of Ephraim, the, dark, the drunken of the northern kingdom. It says here, let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually to shake. Verse 24 says, pour out thine indignation upon them and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not, and not be written with the righteous. That right there should tell you exactly who's being spoken of when you go into Revelation 7. Revelation 7 and 4 says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, all of them, and there's only 12. Not that 13th Danite tribe is not mentioned among the elect of the Israelites. And in verse 4 it says all, all the tribes. So that means they're no longer a part of the children of Israel. If these are the names and the number of all the tribes of Israel, then that means that there's an entire nation of people called the Dan tribe, that has been blotted out of the book of the living and not written with the righteous. It says, let them not come into thy righteousness, let them be blotted out of the book. This right here should tell you exactly who's being spoken of. And it's not talking about the two-thirds. Because they're not the persecutors. They're, for they, it says here, for they persecute him whom thou hast smitten. The two-thirds are part of the smitten and part of the wounded. They're not they that are talking to the grief of, of the people who are wounded. These are the abjects and the slanderers that are gathering themselves together. And we don't even know it. Except the scriptures tell us that they are. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written amongst the written with the righteous. Verse 29 says, But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O power, set me up on high. Also speaks about the poor. He's the power of the poor. He continuously tells us that he's the most high power of the poor. And these drunkards of Ephraim have been fruitful. As it says, fat valleys. Fat in the valley. So they've been fruitful, crown, prideful, crown of pride. While our people have been, well, the, the most high is going to be the power of the poor. The, this world pertains to them. 
They're the serpent, by the way. In the, in the time when the earth has been given over into the hand of the wicked, they've been profitable and prosperous. So elites, they're the black elites. The heads of the people. Definitely fruitful people. And they look out for each other. As I make another reference back to the... Um, to my shared videos where I have the Black Boule videos on there. You definitely, if you're from the Negroes, his, from the slave trade, Hispanic or Native American, you definitely want to watch those Black Boule videos that I posted. And it'll show you that there's some fruitful people that are, are only looking out for each other in their secret societies and their certain fraternities and sororities. These are the Negro Indians that are coming out the Dan tribe. So definitely uh, this precept you can never comprehend without understanding the Dan tribe, that her, their eyes have been darkened, where it says, let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. This also is like a two-way scripture, for, as well as Isaiah 28 and 13, precept upon precept for a snare and a trap. This is also is almost exactly the same thing, except it's being spoken of a little differently. Eyes being darkened over the persecutors, blotted out the book of the living. This is how you understand it's talking about the Danites. These are parables, parabolic meanings, parabolic speech that you can never comprehend being partial in milk, which is what they've done. They've been, they've, not only have they not gone into the gaps with the doctrine, but they haven't taught you exactly the Dan tribe and who they are among us. So many of our people don't know who our brethren are and who our brethren are not. Our people are definitely going backwards. They're calling what I'm doing right now hatred telling you that there, ha there is a Negro Indian nation of people among us lying to us. Reproof. They're still calling correction and reproof lies. I mean, excuse me, hatred. So the same correction is grievous to them that are out of the way. The same precepts our people use for Christianity. They're, they claim I'm, I'm hating. But this is, this is love to my people, to the 12 tribes of Israel, and understanding that we have a nation of people among us that really hate us. This is love to our people. It's not that I hate the Negro Indian. It's just bringing awareness to our people that we have to we have to study harder for ourselves so that our people are definitely going backwards because they're being taken backwards when to go here in psalms 140 and 1 it says to the chief musician that some another psalm of david if you haven't comprehended these last three psalms that i just broken down with the lions and, and the nets and the, and the parables this one right here is a lot easier to understand that it's talking about the dan tribe this is Psalms 140 and 1, a Psalm of David. It says, Deliver me, O power, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Once again, the 300, Leonidas, the Spartans, violent, evil man. The things that they do are evil. One, one, I'm going to even write it. I'm going to even read this completely out. Where it says, The boule to. Here it says, the, the Boulé is a black elite secret society that runs black neighborhoods in accordance to the CIA's plans. The Boulé recruits top blacks from American society into its ranks. Blacks who, joins, blacks who join the Boulé are given special privileges and perks. Anywhere there are prominent professional blacks, chances are they're in the Boulé. Members of the Boulé are called archons, a word for demons and Gnosticism. To capture their souls, homosexual trice are encouraged as initiation rites. They keep this keeps archons and slaves to the satanic elite power structure. The evil man. They're, all, they're called demons. They're called archons even. They're violent. They'll kill you. These people will kill you. These secret society, they'll Trayvon Martin you. They'll set you up. They'll sacrifice you. They're a violent people. They're the ones that the Negroes doing sacrifices in your entertainment business. They're the ones uh, worshiping Satan. Evil man. Violent. These are characteristics. They're telling you the characteristics of these people. Verse number two, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. Continually. Even though it's, it's been somewhat of a, a spiritual battle of late, it's definitely have been in times past a physical battle. Physical war. This is a spiritual war. Continually are they gathered for war. That means it nonstop. I've also mentioned that this is the basis right here. This is another reason why black, what they call them black on black crime is so strong even to this day. Because if I read this out, it says African and Americans. African Americans are not the same race. This is why black folks have a hard time coming together. You're dealing with two groups of people, Native Americans and 
what they, they say here is Africans, but we, we're the Hebrews. We're the Israelites from the, from the tribe of Judah here in America.